Hello everyone, today I will be installing Windows 2000 onto this Toshiba Portage R200. It came out in 2005 and was extremely thin at less than 1 inch thick. Being so thin, it did not have a built-in CD drive. To work around that limitation, I'll be using an external USB optical drive. I also need a modern PC as well as a USB flash drive. These are all things that can be easily attained. I also need Windows 2000. I will be using Service Pack 4 as it has the latest updates before Microsoft ended support for it. Finally, I need the drivers for the Portage R200 for Windows 2000. These can be found on the Dynabook support website as Toshiba spun their PC business out last year into Dynabook. I'm surprised that Toshiba has maintained support for these old laptops. First, we're going to prepare the installation media by burning Windows 2000 onto a CD. I am doing this on my modern PC running Windows 10. Next, I copy all the drivers onto the USB flash drive. Now we're ready to begin. I connect the external USB optical drive to the laptop using a cable that has two connections. One is for the data while the other is for the power. It was common in laptops of this era and before to not have sufficient power in one USB port to power an optical drive. I turn the laptop on while holding down F12 to pause at the boot menu where I can select the boot device. I insert the CD and select the CD as the boot device. I wait a little while for the CD to spin up before continuing with booting. This has sometimes made the difference between whether the laptop booted from the CD or skipped it. This would be a common theme. Often the laptop doesn't give the CD drive enough time and would fail to read the data it needed. But I just needed to retry sometimes a few times and it would continue the installation. This 
part is critical. I had to agree to the terms and conditions and select the partition to install Windows to quickly, all before the CD started spinning down. Once the CD stopped spinning, it was game over. I have a clip of that at the end of this video. For some reason, the laptop would freeze when it was restarting. I had to do hard resets to restart it. This is accomplished by holding down the power key until the laptop turns off. Windows asked for the CD, so I made sure the CD was in the drive and pressed OK. I did this a few times. I also waited for the CD drive to spin up before doing it. It should then continue. You'll see me doing this a few times throughout the installation process. I respect intellectual property and do not encourage software piracy. As it turns out, the computer name is limited to a maximum of 15 characters. disconnected the external USB optical drive and plugged in the USB flash drive. The laptop only has two USB ports, so it was one or the other, since the optical drive needs both ports. I held down the escape key as I turned the laptop on. Then I pressed F1 to go into the BIOS, where I could change the first boot device to the hard drive. This is an optional step. Once I was back in Windows, I started installing the drivers. The only thing of note here is to install the Toshiba Common Modules first, as some of the other software rely on it. For some reason, when I tried to install the Marvel LAN driver, the laptop froze and I had to perform a hard reset. Then Windows would blue screen when booting. I had to go into safe mode by holding down F8 while booting, then selecting safe mode. Only then could I boot into Windows. I tried reinstalling the Marvel LAN driver which fixed the blue screen, and I could eventually go back to booting Windows normally to continue installing the drivers. That was a nice little detour. And now, at long last. Thank you, thank you. This is what it looks like when Windows fails mid-installation due to the CD spinning down. Now if you're wondering why we installed Windows this way as opposed to some other way I've shown before, it is because this laptop does not have a typical laptop hard drive. 